they tell me that he's like playing music on the living room TV and he's going looking at oh. and they and they said okay well what was that and they they're texting me talking about some this is so much blah 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 like he's saying the n word in the living room and I'm like okay are you guys saying something did you like talk to him about it or whatever and they're like no like we don't know what to say okay i think that's crazy uh Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Darius, and this video is for the grass. It should cost a billion to look that good. Today, we are having um, jerk chicken from Jerk 48. A couple months ago, I actually went to um, Jerk 48 to get my mom some jerk chicken, um, and the lady knew me there. Um, but we went to a different location this time and I actually never ate my food. My mom ate mine too, um, for a video. So, um, this is my first time trying this specific jerk, um, place. I think I only had jerk like once in my other time in my life. How many times really? did it Yeah. I've never had it. I was joking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally told Malik before we started, I said, you're going to say you never had it. <laughs> um, and I was obviously joking, but he said, "I really, I've never had it. I've had a lot. Um, really? Okay. So, did you do you ever have it? I mean, did you have it a lot when you were here before? Like when you were no, younger? No, but I saying? think that jerk became popular after that. Like, was it really? really? I don't know. My mom has always talked about jerk chicken her whole life. Really? Yes. Um, so I'm. I got um, green beans and potatoes, um, mac and cheese. Um, the beans and or the peas and rice, and then uh, dark, half dark jerk chicken, and then every sauce. I'm, I'm sure y'all know what's up, but every one of these was a dollar, and I got four of them. I just think that's so crazy that everyone is a dollar. It's probably because it takes crazy. it's homemade, I guess, and they're like it takes us a long time to make them, and I don't know, but a dollar. And at first, I was like, oh, it should be fine, like you know. Um, I got a jerk quesadilla. Um, it's actually pretty good. And you've had that before, right? No, I haven't had the ACD. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Did we say it's from Jerk48? Yeah, I think we did. Um, everything's actually... These green beans are actually really good. They're spicy. Um, I didn't expect them to be that good. Mm. Well, this is really heavy. Now, you guys know, first of all, I'm not a bone-in person. And second of all, I usually don't get dark meat. But... I went to Uncle Joe's. I don't know if you guys know what Uncle Joe's is or heard of it, but um, Uncle Joe's um, is literally so good. But I got, a, I think I got like white and dark meat and the white meat was just a little bit overcooked. And I said, what was that? Um, now, let me try this jerk sauce. So you don't like jerk sauce. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, I think when I had the Uncle Joe's was like the first time, one of the first times I've ever had. Uh, I said one of the first times. One of the only times I've ever had jerk chicken. And I just thought the sauce was so good. Um, and they actually sell it at Jewel Oscar, which I think is so interesting. And I also have this elixir. It's like Jamaican Kool-Aid. Jamaican punch. Mm -hmm. And this is so good. It's very... Mm. Um, probably has enough sugar to kill my lineage, though. <laughs> Can you stop? But it's very good. I'm hoping you can hear him. I'll just keep your window low down. Um, this is actually really good. But I think the sauce is not... Hmm. I think the sauce tastes the same as Uncle Joe's, but the the um, the um Uncle Joe's sauce that they sell at J Jewel Osco, like, in the bottle, is much more pungent and, like, more vinegary. And I love that. You don't even like vinegar stuff, do you? Mm. What? I just think it's really good. Like, I feel like also like, um, I don't know. I guess I'm just not used to dark meat. So, um, what what else have you had there that was not? Okay, I've had so, yeah. the um, I've had they have a loaded fry, and it's like jerk chicken fries, um, cheese, sour cream. This is very good. Their fries are good. Um, it sounds good. I had a jerk Alfredo. And it was okay. Um, I don't know. I just don't like... I don't know. I don't like that type of style of chicken. Um, 
I'm trying to get it so they can see it, but this is so heavy to hold up and to try to dip my sauce in there. The, everything is actually pretty spicy, um, which I like a lot. I like um, spice, but um, I don't know. I just guess I'm not used to going to places that like their spice level is actually spicy to me. Um, I think the mac and cheese is okay, but this video is going to end up being shorter than we would like it to be because we're running out of time, but um, it'll, you'll still get the full kit and caboodle. Do you want to share your, your barber story? Um, I went to the barber yesterday. I haven't heard this, so we'll see. I went to the barber yesterday and uh, this is um, this is a barber and I don't know how much you guys pay for haircuts. I'm just talking about like haircuts, maybe a shave, but like this haircut like the haircuts that i get here now are so expensive they're 139 dollars um which is crazy and right. no, it's, it's very crazy we're in a, a um but also like hair just in general has been going up like prices and people complain about that have been complaining about that for a long time yeah but i've never experienced it so it's been okay right oh <laughs> okay <laughs> but now that i'm experiencing it it needs to end there needs to be a stop put to it <laughs> um but anyway so i've been to this guy two times this was the second time i went and he's nice he's fine or whatever um and he uh it's not ne there's never been anybody in there until i was getting my haircut today and he always has this little guy sitting next to him and the little guy um is always just on his phone okay this guy walks in um and <sighs> what do you mean my little guy He's a little guy. He's like a little, like he's probably like young. Like I see him as like an apprentice. Mm. Um, and he's just okay. sitting there. And this this guy walks in and he looks so confused. And this guy's Hispanic. It, it matters for me to say that. It matters. Uh -huh. And he's also bald. And he walks. So okay, let me set this, this mm -hmm. story. So your barber is not in this situation yet. No, my mm -hmm. barber is barbering me. Okay, and this little guy is sitting wherever, next to me, next to you, and then a, a bald Hispanic guy walks. A bald in. Hispanic guy walks in. Okay, and he's looking around. And he's going, "Do you guys do haircuts?" And then he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "I need a haircut." And I'm thinking, "I had like he's completely bald." Yeah, like he there's maybe the faintest hair, a breath of the hair. Okay, a breath of fresh hair on his Can head. Can you stop? That's it, and. Um, he's like, yeah, what do you need? Cause he had a little bit of like, um, like a goatee situation. Okay. So I was like, maybe he just wants that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I want a high top fade. Um, <laughs> he did not say <laughs> yes, high top fade. Yes, he did. Fade. He said, I want to fade, put a little elbow grease in it, dust it up. And then I want <laughs> you to shave off this side down to about a two. And I'm going, what is going on? So then he's like, uh, I guess I can try to do that for you. He's just on the chair next to me. All of a sudden, he starts going off about, "You're a pretty, you're a pretty little guy," and he says, "Um, wait, <laughs> I'm not kidding." He says, "You're a pretty little guy," and then the guy's going, "Um, yeah," <laughs> and he said, "You need to bulk up, I think." Um, I go to the gym every day, and uh, the gym loves wait, me. Wait, stop playing with that before they. I go to the gym every day. <laughs> And um, you need to start doing that too. What do you eat? And he goes, uh, well, I don't really. What do you eat is crazy. What? How many estimated calories do you eat? Because I think that uh, health is very important. And um, I think that big people, um, if they're like, it, there's no reason to be big. And I'm sitting in the chair going, uh, what? I'm sitting in the chair big as hell. Um, and he's going big, there's just, and mind you, this guy is not even, this guy's not even small. He has some meat to him too. Okay. And he's going, there's just no reason. I've lost 20 pounds in the course of a year, a year. And, I, and he's going, there's no reason for anybody to be big. Like if you're big, you're just right. lazy. So you're saying like a year ago, he was not. What is 20 pounds? If that, right. Like, and, um, he was going, yeah, I'm going to help you because you really need to bulk up. You're too small. How old are you? He what? Goes, <laughs> this is so crazy. He goes, I'm 20. And he goes, oh, yeah, you're really young, but also too old to be not doing anything. And then he's going, um, okay, well, what do you think I should do? 
Um, and he said, well, do you do anything active now? And he's like, well, I play basketball and do stuff like that. And he's like, no, you're doing cardio. That's just going to make you smaller. You need to start lifting weights. And then he's like, uh, I do kind of do that too. And like, I do like a dirty bulk. He said a dirty bulk. Are you dumb or stupid? You cannot be doing a dirty bulk. A and dirty when, bulk for if you don't know at home is when you are trying to max out your calories. So that's what bulking is. And a dirty bulk means that you don't care what you eat. You just, it's not clean. It's not healthy. You just like go and eat as many burgers as you can or whatever you can to get, had that many calories. Sorry, this is in case they didn't know. And then he was like, yeah, a dirty bulk. Um, and he said, no, you need to start your day off with this. And then I'm just, and me and my barber are sitting there. And I swear we're both making, the, do, doing a face <laughs> at each other. Um, and he's going, yeah, you need to do this and you need to do that. And then... He goes, yeah, I just don't know what's wrong with everything nowadays. Everything is so processed. I'm at the point in my life where I don't want to eat anything processed, which is kind of fine. I understand. But he's like, mm -hmm. but then he was like, I would rather drink a fifth of vodka every single day than eat another thing processed because alcohol is just so rare and beautiful. And I'm going, okay. I hate when people like are so bold in their opinions and it just. I don't, I don't like when people are not self-aware that this, they sound crazy. Like, they sound so crazy. But then it gets <laughs> way worse. Because oh, my then God. He starts going on tangents. And he's like, yeah, the world is crazy. Nobody wants to get up and do things. That's why everybody's so fat and lazy. Um, and I get up and work out every single day. And, like, you're young and you aren't doing anything either. Um, you're 20 and you're supposed to be in the prime of your life. And look how scrawny you are. What? Um, and I'm going, this is so crazy to say. And he's like, yeah, everything is so processed. And then I got this popcorn the other day and I thought that it was like healthy popcorn. And he said, he I look at the back and it's some, some gum and in, 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 there's no popcorn in the popcorn. <laughs> and I'm going, what is going on? And then he said, <laughs> and mm -mm. this is where I said, okay, this is a lot. And then he said, and those drag queens. <laughs> oh, no, he did not. Yes, he did. And he said, and those drag queens are rotting um, our child's brain. I would never, ever, ever let my child in anywhere near a drag queen. Um, I don't even know why they let that type of shit happen nowadays. It's so insane. The world is going to shit. Um, and, and they want us to, like, not protest that. Like, man, if I see a drag queen, I'm going to him in his face. And I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> Was your barber's thing? Me and my barber were looking at it, but then the 20 year old says, Yeah, if I. <laughs> no, uh, not yeah. Says, yeah, you know what? When I have kids, they aren't going to be wrong any of that. <laughs> um, and he said, All this gay sh and all these LGB and the, and the QRS. And I. Oh hey, my God. And what's going on? And then they're going, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now we're talking. Um, and I'm going, this is so much. Cause at first when the scrawny guy, when it was on him, he didn't want to say anything, but uh, right. now that the, the topic changed, um, he, he was had so ready to say in the press, he had a lot to say in the press. He was so ready to talk about it. Um, but and then they did actually proceed to do a lot. And then this other person, um, there was actually so much going on. The first time it was way more peaceful. This other time it was way more hectic. In my in my right here, I'm hearing the guy um go, yeah, this LGB QRS is so crazy. And then this other guy's walking in trying to ask my barber about the Wi-Fi and security system. Mm -hmm. And he's going, can you like wait a second? I'm trying to do something. I'll talk to you after. And it was all just actually so much. Um, and I just think that was really crazy. And I think that like he like, and then he was also getting his haircut for a really long time, which confused me. So wait, did the, the the little guy who was the apprentice? He was cutting his hair. Yeah. Oh, and he also said Trump twenty twenty, Trump twenty twenty four. That's why I said the Hispanic part matters. Oh, okay, um, yeah, okay, that because makes sense. he was like, and I just don't get why how anybody couldn't have voted for Trump. He should have been the person in twenty sixteen too. I don't get it. What's going on? Um, I'm just thinking this is really crazy. Um, and yeah. That is interesting, and it's like also, what are you supposed to do in that situation? Because obviously, know. like, that is an uncomfortable situation, and you know, depending on the environment, where when do you feel like it's right to like say, well, no, um, never, I mind my business. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't do that. 
Um, I think that in, well, okay, it depends on the situation is what I mean. Like, there was this, um, and I guess I'll never see this, so I don't care. But there's this guy who ended up being all my friend's roommates in, um, in, oh, oh my God, I actually never told you this. Um, he ended up being all my friend's roommates in Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. And so quickly, because we don't have a lot of time, I went there to visit, right? So let me actually start from the beginning. So they, they all live in a house. Um, and one of my roommates or one of my friends ha didn't come back to school. Okay. And so therefore they had already signed a lease for a house and they had an open vacant spot. Right. Mm -hmm. So they were like, we just need to get somebody cause we don't want to actually have to pay that extra rent. So they found this guy, um, never met him, just found him on Facebook and was like, Oh, okay, this should be fine. Um, and so then he, he gets there or whatever. And like the first week that he's there, some crazy stuff is happening. And they're telling me about it. Obviously, I'm not there. This is last semester or in the fall. Um, and so they're telling me about it. And I'm like, this is kind of crazy. But I feel like they don't speak up about anything. And so let me tell you the things that he was doing. So the first day that they meet the, the new roommate, he like, I guess because he was like nervous to meet them, whatever. He got like obliterated. He got really drunk. And he's like just oh. in the living room. And I was like, that's a very interesting thing to do. Like, mm -hmm. whatever, right? So he's doing that. And I think it's also interesting because like no one else is drunk at all. It's not a weekend. Like That's weird. <laughs> he like just got drunk. I, I don't know what he thought he was walking into. And um, they tell me that he's like playing music on the living room TV. And he's going, um, um, uh, looking at oh. and And they said, okay, well, what was that? And they're, they're texting me, talking about some, this is so much, blah, 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 blah. Like, he's saying the N-word in the living room. And I'm like, okay, are you guys saying something? Did you, like, talk to him about it or whatever? And they're like, no, like, we don't know what to say. Okay, I think that's crazy. Um, like, we don't know what to do, blah, 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 blah. And so then, like, I don't know all the details, but several other things happened. Like, he's definitely saying the F-slur. Like, he's definitely saying, like, things in their presence. And I'm like, you guys just need to, like, actually speak up and say something. Um... And so then I think Will said that he talked to him and was like, you can't be like saying those words. And he was like, well, like things that you've heard before, black friends. Oh, he's from Boston. Apparently the girl, did you know that the girls in Boston are just not like cute, quirky or fun or fresh for like in, in terms of racism? I didn't know no, that. No, I didn't. So it's apparently a thing for Boston. Now, if you're from Boston, this is no shade and no tea. But I literally was, I'll be on like TikTok and they'll be like, the girls in the, in the, Alta store, the Sephora store with the black That's face that Boston. was in Boston. Yeah. No, I walked over here and you're about to like, send me that. Like, this lady has no shame. Do you want to talk to Go ahead. This is like, literally. Let alone how incredibly effective this is. This is so wild. It's not a face mask. This is so shameful. This is so shameful. Like, and everyone in the comments is going, oh, now that I know it's Boston, of course. And what? I didn't know that the boy that that was that had been saying all this stuff or whatever, he's from Boston. And so I was like, I put two and two together. Not that every single person from Boston is like that. But if, if everyone is saying like, oh, that makes sense now that this person's from Boston. Um, that sounds crazy. And so I was like, OK, interesting. And I'm like, really, we can't go anywhere. Uh, Boston is crazy, <laughs> I think. We can't even go to Boston. And not, not that you can't go to Boston and there, there's, or there's no black people in Boston, but I just feel like that the fact if that If I saw a trope, black face in Boston, I'm not leaving. You're not leaving? Well, I am in a body bag. You're leaving in a body bag if you see black face in and Boston. And the people in black face are leaving in a body bag. It's going to be like a murder-suicide type Okay, of okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they really, like, okay, I think Will had mentioned, like, hey, you probably shouldn't say those things, blah, 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 blah. And... He was a very interesting character. So I, the reason why they were telling me all this is because I was supposed to go visit them like the week after. And they were like, we need you to say something. And I was like, I don't even live there. Okay, see, I think that's crazy. Uh, I hate a person that's like, mm, my mom said that all black people are monkeys. Okay. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> what, what do you mean? You never had that. Well, that's basically what happened. I don't like when it's like a... Yeah, my mom just thinks that, like, Mexicans don't belong here. And I'm like, okay, well, what did you say? Oh, nothing. She's crazy. Right. I don't like that. Like, I don't I'm not saying that, anything is crazy. I don't think that you should, um... I don't think that a black person should have to fight, um, the battles. I think what it was is that they were just used to me, um... 
doing that when we and and that was an issue I kind of had like it wasn't a huge deal but I felt like whenever we were in the face of of adversity in any situation because I have I had minority and gay friends in in Arizona whenever we were in a situation where somebody would say something crazy they I feel like they would be like oh that's not my place to say something back and I'd be like How absolutely not? not and so then I would be the one to be like to it, at least either be by myself or lead the, the conversation of, hey, you can, I mean, like, confrontationally, like, you can't say those things or, and this is why or whatever. Not in, like, a let's fight kind of way, but just, like, let's have a conversation, like, it, and, you know, whatever. So I want to fight. Um, I almost did one time. Um, that was actually a really crazy situation. I told you about that one, though, but anyway so and then um um basically so i got there i met him obviously he was nice and he was cordial or whatever um and he it, i guess it only happens when he gets drunk so they, they had already figured out the pattern. what that's really scary they had figured out the pattern that he becomes like this other person when he gets drunk and i was like that is kind of scary um and so i'm there and um basically he, we like are drinking that weekend or whatever and he's not really like obviously like we're not hanging out with them but like we're pre-gaming in the house and he's there and he's like you know drinking too whatever he uh, to give him a little or give, or give him a little backstory his friend he's a he was a super senior or not a super, oh. you know he was like there for an extra year and all of his friends had graduated so he had no friends really in, in tucson mm -hmm. so he was kind of just like you know there like kind of pre-gaming with us not necessarily going out with us but so I had had a couple, a couple conversations with him or whatever, just like learning out where he's from or whatever. Apparently his girlfriend, and this is what I don't get either. It was like very stereotypical. Like his girlfriend was like, you shouldn't say the F slur because her best friend is gay, mm -hmm. a gay man. And so she was like, you shouldn't be saying these words. Like though that's a slur or whatever. And I'm just like, why are you dating him? Yeah. Cause like, I mean, I, I, kudos to you for like, you know, sticking up for, for, um, gay people. I don't know if she was doing it when he was saying the N-word, so they didn't tell me that. But um, it's kudos for you for sticking up. But, like, also, like, isn't that a turn-off? Like, if you, if you, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah. I, I always, do. I always think it's interesting, like, when they, um, when I see people who are like, oh, well, my boyfriend, he's just problematic, and I'm trying to change him. And that's great. <laughs> it's like, okay, but well. see, I also think that this is all a problem of, like, being, like, I think people, it's, like, a very much so a bystander effect where it's, like, I can't say anything um, because I'm not that thing. But then it's, like, do you not care? I don't know. But that's fake, though, because, like, I feel like if it was, um... Because if you're gay, you just physically can't date anybody who's homophobic. Right. And, and if you're black, you can't date someone who's racist. Exactly. Because it's just that's not how it works. But then if you're white and you're straight, then you can just... You can do those things and it doesn't matter. Right. But I think that that's problematic. Of course. Um, but I also think that... I also think that when friends... Because I feel like I had the same experience where... It would be like, oh, Malik is going to be the one to get on this person. But then I feel like I had to have a, I had a realization where I think that that's crazy. Because one time right. somebody was like, yeah, I was at this party. And then um, um, this people were saying things and you have to say something. And then I'm like, well, why do I have to say something? Right. Like, I think that you can say something. You don't have to wait to, for me to come here and say something. And I think I that, think it's probably because they're used to you doing that. No. Mm, I think maybe that is true, but then I'm I can't do that anymore. I want you to say something. Right, but they also have to be. Calm. But I think it's because I have we have to have the burden of knowledge. We have to have the burden right. of knowing burden of everything of knowing um, why this is wrong and why exactly the roots that come behind it. Right, and that right, and that. all of that. And because if we don't, we'll look crazy. And right, then, but and then it, white people don't have to do that, and I think that that's not fair. Um, I agree, and I'm and not saying that no white people do, have don't do that. I'm just saying they don't have to. Right? They don't. Yeah. There's no. Um, it's they don't have any any feet in the race in mm -hmm. in, in, in the sense that like, but in the sense that yeah. <laughs> um, but no. So basically, back to finish the the end of the story. I was this is crazy. I was at this point. At this point, we were like feeling bad because we had been going out that whole weekend, and he didn't have any really friends or whatever. So he was kind of pre gaming with us, but then he would like not be with us after that mm -hmm. um and so like he would just be at home i guess or whatever so then one time we were just like should we invite him like to come out with us or whatever because uh -huh. we wanted to be nice he was like you know he didn't have any friends or whatever so uh we we invited him to the pool um like a pool party or whatever and so we're at the pool and we're all drinking we're you know i'm like 
kind of just like, I don't know, I guess I am drunk at that point. And he was drunk too. And, you know, again, he was really nice. And he had never said any, like, words around me. Um, but also, I feel like that's crazy too. He probably thought, like, oh, well, it's fine because none of the, my friends um, in Arizona at that, at that time were black. So... I guess he like didn't think maybe he thought he could say the n-word around them but not around me it was like too much or I don't know but I never heard him say any of anything right so we get drunk I ended up getting liquid courage obviously so we're talking or whatever and just like we're in the pool and I said so what is this that I'm hearing about you saying all these slurs because I, I literally brought it up he didn't even know that I knew about all these mm -hmm. things or whatever and he was like oh well like um you know I, I have black friends in Boston slow your roll <laughs> Slow your roll immediately. And he was like, they think it's fine for me. to." And I said, I don't care what they think. Like, it's not about like an individual black person being like, oh, this doesn't offend me because mm -hmm. that's not go somewhere else and, and see what, what people are going to say. I think that's crazy. Like, I don't know. But um, or maybe he would maybe he didn't say black friends and maybe he was just talking about his friends who were not black. And like he was like, that's just how we I grew up like me and my friends say it. And so I was like, OK, well. If you were around a he like, if you were in a heavily heavily black area, like, are you with your chest saying the n word around black people? And he was like, "Yeah, my my grandma told me that." Uh, and I was like, "You're what? lying." I was like, "That is that is just not true." If I bring you around a a group of black people and you are the only white person, you are not gonna have that comfortability to be like just spewing out the n word like that. You're not gonna do that. Um, and, and I was trying to explain it to him and he was just like, well, it was just the way I grew up, like, and this, this and that. And then, um, what else did he say? And then he was like, I don't know. I don't know the specifics, but he was doing so much in this pool conversation. And I was just like, there's no reason for you to be saying all of these things. Um, and he was like, that's just like a thing that me and my friends do at home. It's like kind of a joke. We just, we just, um, that's I think crazy. it's funny to hate gay people. <laughs> I have my whole life. Oh. And I was like, so do you have any gay friends? No. Have you ever talked to any gay people? No. I was like, so, like, do you have any black friends? A couple. So, you never had any experiences with these people. You hate them because of your family or what, or your friends or whatever you grew up in Boston. And this is all making sense now. And um, you, like, hate all these things or whatever, right? So, we're having a conversation. I think the next night or whatever, we ended up drinking again. Um, and me and him at, then we had a hard heart. Cause I was like, um, we had a conversation yesterday. I think that it's outrageous. And he was like, he actually told me he was like being here and like living with, um, um, all the, all of my gay friends or whatever. Obviously I wasn't living there. And he was like, having these conversations with you has like really changed my mind. Cause like I had really never encountered. And I think that's the main thing is like, people just don't encounter and, and try to become friends with or interact with gay people or black people or whatever the case may be. And then they, they form all these opinions or whatever. And then they just never change them because they don't feel the need that they have to. And so he was like, have, he literally told me he was like having these conversations with you or whatever, like made me realize that you guys are just like normal people, like just like anybody else. See, and I was like, this I is insane. Like I, I don't that, like it either. I think the people still have to go to trash. Like, I don't, go I don't know. Like, I don't like, a, I get it now. But well, do we really? I don't know. I just I just feel like we're at too I think it's twenty twenty four, we're at too big of an age to like not get it. Like, I don't know, I just can't do it. I think I'm giving I'm starting to have zero tolerance. Well I, I think just, I have zero tolerance actually. So Um, I don't know. I just think this is all crazy and like what are we supposed to do? Um and why do I have to be the one to say something? And I don't think you do. I know, but then, like, also, if I don't say something, it's not going to get said. But then I think you need to uh, have a conversation. With I you. have. Uh, and it's not, and they've gotten better. Like, it's not like they're like, I don't want to say anything. Like, they I definitely have gotten better. And that will, it's kind of like uh, exposure therapy. I'm not there. Mm -hmm. So if you, if something happens, either you're going to continue letting it happen to you or you're going to say something. I'm no longer there to be like, hey, can you say something? Or like, this this crazy thing happened. Like, what should I do, Darius? You know, it's crazy. Um, I don't know. So like, now they're like more into saying things or whatever. Um, and also like, I guess they're get like some of my friends were younger, so they're getting older and like realizing that they're gonna have to like say something or be silent and, and endure whatever they had to endure. Um, but it's just so crazy that he even I'm missing like more information of like all the specific things that he said. But like, I just think that's so crazy. And he was saying um, the N word this and the N word that and the, the F slow this and F slow that. 
and he was just like i never really talked to or had in, like had friends like that or and to be like oh i finally see you guys as human now that i've had a conversation that with you is, is so really crazy. crazy that is really crazy i don't know i don't know and he was just like you guys it's just like like what's the difference it's just, just being normal and i finally met his i met his girlfriend she was there that weekend too and she was really nice but and she was also like a women's studies major see, and like crazy. i was like this is insane like how are you dating him like I, I like she was very like um for the girls when i was talking to her she was like i'm trying to get him to understand this this and that and this and that i'm like oh, wh what do you see and they had a toxic relationship this is not that's oh, not none of my business okay. but they were they'd be screaming at each other i would hear him in the room um the, one time she left in the middle of the, this was all in a matter of four days so one time she left uh -huh. in the middle of the, she slammed it she said i hate you and i was like this is so crazy but no shade like no tea to them and i don't yeah. know the situation but um but she was really nice and i was just like how is this like how are you dating him like I, I don't know people always want to be like the fixer upper okay but i think that's like fix maybe like they um have attachment issues they are bad at responding sometimes yeah i they don't know they hate black people i don't think that these things add up in the same type of thing like why are you even taking on that challenge well they don't hate black people they just say oh the n word it's in the song that's you guys crazy. say why can't i yeah. That's so crazy. You guys say it all the time. Why can't I see it? No, you can't say it. Um, I don't know. I just think that's so... Whatever. You have to go, like, right now. Because yeah. you're supposed to be there earlier. But um, we are going to finish with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. It's more of like a... Um, these are the kind of conversations that I feel like I normally have with my friends and Malik specifically. Um, so, like, we're just, like, bringing that onto camera. I hope you kind of liked um, or engaged in the conversation. Let us know your what you think in the comments about, like, all the things we said. I literally been getting texts this whole entire time. It's so weird. Um, anyways, we'll see you guys next time with another video. Um, peace out.